So this first example, then, here's a triangle laid out. I know a couple of angles. And I know one side, and I'm after x. First thing to remember is, of course, if I know two angles, I know three, don't I? What is it that I use to find the last angle, the remaining angle? A little bit of information. Yeah, all angles in a triangle must add up to 180, which is something that um, I haven't specifically mentioned, but it's assumed that you remember. So if, you'd, if that's new information to you or you've forgotten, all angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So I know what that is. That's 70. Take that away from 180. That's 110 degrees. So if I know two of the angles, I know the third. I don't need to worry about using the sine or the cosine rule to get the other angle. So now I want x. So what I do is I say to myself, I'm going to use the sine rule because I know a ratio. Look, I know an angle and a side opposite. So I know one ratio. And I want this. So I use this other ratio here, x over 30, sine 30. So I say this, a over sine a equals b over sine b equals c over sine c. That's the, the uh, sine rule, so it's in my head. The first thing to realise about using these things is we only ever use two of the ratios. We never use all three. The sine rule is just saying that these ratios are all the same. The ratio of the sides to the angles are equal to each other, as we've mentioned before. So I only actually ever use two. And the two ratios I use are the ratio I know and the ratio that includes what I'm after. So the two ratios I'm going to use in this case are the ratio I know, which is 4.5 over sine 40, and the ratio that includes x, which is x over sine 30. If I'd been interested in this side instead of x, then I'd have used the ratio um, that side over sine 110. So you just use whichever ratio includes what you're after. Now I've got a little equation, I've got to solve it. Like any equation, remember sine 30 is a number. I could work out what is on the calculator, so it's just a number. So if I want x, I multiply both sides by that number, sine 30. So x equals... 4.5 over sine 40 times sine 30. Remember, this could just as easily be 4.5 times sine 30 over sine 40. So I could put that into the calculator just as easily as that and I'd get the same answer. So I use my fraction button on the calculator Check I'm in degrees now, because my angle is in degrees, and work out the answer, x. So x equals 3.5. What I want you, do, you to do now then, just as a little extra exercise, is work out what um, y is. I want to find out what this side is now. So use the sine rule again and calculate y. So hopefully you got that, y equals 6.58. So now we know our triangle. We know all the sides and all the angles. We know that that's 6.58 now. We know that angle is 110. We know all the sides. We know x, whatever that was, um, 3.5, and we know all the angles. So we're there. We've got complete information about this triangle. Let's have a look at it again, though. 
we worked out that that was 6.58. We know that that's 4.5 and that's 40. That was the initial information we were given. Let's say we didn't know this angle. So we want to find this one, x. So can we use the sine rule in this particular case? Do we know a ratio? Yes, we know this side and that angle. So again, we can use the sine rule to work out the missing angle. So let's have a look at this. We know what this is. It's 110 degrees, x. But let's prove it. So, what's the ratio? 4.5 over the sine of 40, that's the ratio we know, equals... The other ratio, including what we want, that's going to be 6.58 over the sine of x. So it involves the ratio that we know and the ratio including what we're after. So now we've got to solve this. But remember we talked about this idea before. If I've got a fraction on both sides, I can flip them. And the problem is, with this, the sine x is on the bottom. So I could flip both ratios, uh, and it would still be true, and call it sine of 40 over 4.5 equals the sine of x over 6.58. I can turn my two ratios over. They're still true. And now all I need to do is multiply both sides six by 6.58, and I've got sine of x. Sine of 40 over 4.5 times 6.58. Finally, we want x, so we want the inverse sine of that. We want to undo the sine. So x equals sine to the minus 1 of this lot, sine 40 over 4.5 times 6.58. Or I could put the, the whole thing over 4.5. So now I put that into the calculator, check I'm in degrees, and out comes the angle in degrees. X turns out to be 70 degrees, but we know looking back at the original problem, that x is 110 degrees. So what's going on here? Let's have a look at this. It's to do with this, these angles and this wave idea. So let's draw it out. And what I'm going to do now is sketch out this wave function that we had, but think in terms of the angle like we did on the original sheet. So this is theta now in angles. And this is the sine of the angle. Going up here. We know that this is 2 pi radians. One complete sine for this 2 pi radians. But what's that in degrees? 360. So we know that this is 360 degrees. So that must be 180, and that must be 90, and that must be 270. If you look at your angles between naught and 90 degrees, the calculator tells me the sine of the angle between naught and 90 degrees, assuming, remember this is a rotation, if we go back to the first slide that we had on this idea, uh, if I can find it. Um, if we go back to this, this radius of rotation is key here, the radius of rotation. What the calculator does is it imagines that's one. So it imagines that the maximum you reach, this maximum point on this wave function is one. So when I get to pi over two in radians or 90 degrees in degrees, the the maximum is 1. So if you put into your calculator sine of 90 degrees, you'll get 1. So going back to the original problem, so sine of 90 degrees is 1. And the calculator tells me all the values between 
naught and 90 degrees. So what we looked at was the inverse sine of sine 40 times 6.58 over 4.5, and that turned out to be 70 degrees. Well, 70 degrees is here, roughly. So it's telling us that. It's telling the angle whose sine is that. But that's not the only angle. If we look along here, that angle too has the sine of whatever that is. So does this angle. So does this angle. So does the next one. So there's loads of angles that have that sine value. The calculator only tells us that one. So we have to understand the wave to get the angle we're after. What we do is we say to ourselves, if I'm at 70 degrees, which is that point there, that's 70, and that gives me this point, then I'm actually after this one. Because looking back at the triangle, and how do I know it? Look back at the original triangle. I know an extra bit of information about this triangle. Before I knew that this was 110 degrees, just by looking at it, and this could be a structure or something, just by looking at it, I know that angle is greater than 90 degrees. So I instantly think, ah, that's giving me 70 degrees in my angle, but I'm after actually the angle greater than 90 degrees, which is this one. And then I just think about the symmetry of the wave. 70 degrees is 20 degrees below 90, so the one I'm after must be 20 degrees above 90, which is 110 degrees. A calculator won't tell me that. So sometimes the calculator doesn't give you the right answer, and this is one of them. When the angle is obtuse, in other words, greater than 90 degrees, I have to, as well as do the calculation, think about this and what is the actual angle I'm after. So 110 degrees is the answer, but the calculator didn't tell us that, so beware of those.